Hello. So we have talked about open loop comparators in previous videos. And in this video, we're going to talk about comparators that use positive feedback, also known as Schmidt triggers. The advantages of Schmidt triggers over open loop comparators is that they can use that positive feedback mechanism uh, to operate faster, to provide faster transitions. And the reason for that is the positive feedback reinforces the direction that the output is going. So if the output is going high, uh, that is being fed back into the positive input terminal, and it reinforces that direction of change of the output, making it a faster transition. Uh, they also have uh, something called hysteresis. And uh, hysteresis simply means that they have a different transition point when the output is going from a high to a low, and when the output is coming from a low to a high. And as we shall see, that hysteresis provides more robustness of the comparator uh, with respect to a noisy input. So we uh, have an example here of a Schmidt trigger. We can see that there is a, a, an op-amp or a comparator configured with positive feedback. The output is being fed back uh, to the positive input terminal. And in this case, we have uh, what's known as an inverting Schmidt trigger. The reason why it is inverting is because the input uh, signal is being applied in the inverting or negative input terminal. And so we expect that the output is going to be opposite in polarity to the input, meaning when the input goes high, the output is going to go low. When the input goes low, the output is going to go high and vice versa. Um, now notice that there are two possible uh, output states, and that is when the output is uh, high or when the output is low. Let's imagine that this is an, an op-amp uh, Schmidt trigger, and the op-amp has saturation voltages of plus minus V sat. Then we will have the state when V out is sitting at uh, the positive saturation voltage. And uh, in that case, we can see that the, because the out is being fed back into the positive input terminal via voltage divider. The value on the positive input terminal is going to be equal to R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times uh, that saturation voltage times the out. Um, in the case when the out is equal to negative saturation, so let's imagine it was sitting at uh, positive saturation and uh, this was the transition point the value of V plus becomes our reference or transition point. And let's imagine that now V in increases, so it becomes higher than that value of Vt. Then our V out will go to negative saturation, and our V plus will be sitting at R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times negative V sat, or we could call it negative Vt, where Vt or the transition voltage is uh, generally equal to R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times V sat. But the important thing to notice is that we have a different transition when the output is going from high to low or low to high, uh, namely Vt and negative Vt. So if we were to plot um, our voltage transfer characteristic, V out versus V in, We will have that uh, if we start with V in being low and V out sitting at positive saturation, then um, our V plus voltage will be sitting at Vt. And so it will take for V in to become higher than that Vt voltage for V out to transition. And so V out will be going in that direction. But when V in is coming from high to low, uh, the output is not going to transition at Vt, it's going to transition at negative Vt. And so when we're coming in the opposite direction, in that direction, the output will change states and go from low to high at the value of negative Vt. And this phenomenon of having those separate transitions between low to high or high to low, that's referred to as hysteresis. And in this case, the amount of hysteresis will be equal to 2 times Vt. Uh, I notice that it is programmable. We can program it by selecting adequate values for um, R1 and R2. Now, we mentioned that uh, hysteresis makes the circuit more robust to noise at, in the input. And the reason why that happens is, let's imagine that we have an input signal 
And let's imagine initially it is a, a clean sinusoidal input signal. If we had a, a comparator, as any of the previous open loop comparators that we have presented, where there is no hysteresis, then uh, imagining that our reference voltage is sitting at zero, so that will be our transition voltage, we will expect that the output of our circuit uh, will be low, since this is an, an inverting comparator, will be low whenever V in is high, and then it will be high whenever V in is low. And so we will get a clean uh, square signal. Let's imagine now that our input signal had some noise. Uh, and so it wouldn't be a clean input signal, but rather a noisy input signal. I'm exaggerating the amount of noise a little bit. But notice that if we zoom into the uh, zero uh, transition point, the zero volt point, we will see that due to the noise, it's possible for the input signal to cross that zero point a few times before it finally uh, becomes consistently negative or likewise when it's crossing it in the opposite direction before it cons becomes consistently positive. Now, in an open loop comparator that has no hysteresis, every time that uh, the input signal crosses that zero point, because of the noise several times, what's going to happen is that there's gonna be a change in the output voltage. And so, instead of having a clean transition in the output from low to high, we would rather have uh, several small transitions before the output finally settles to its final voltage. Um, and again, that's because there is those multiple zero crossing points that the input due to the noise. If we have hysteresis, it, the output signal will not go from high to low until uh, the input signal has, has gone beyond that transition voltage uh, in one direction. So if it is going from, let's say, the output is going from low to high, uh, it really takes for the input signal to go to a negative VT value before the output signal will flip um, and switch to a high uh, value. And in the case of the low to high transition, the input signal will have to go past positive VT for the output signal to transition uh, to its low state. And therefore, I will expect that my output signal will be cleaner. Uh, depending on how noisy my input signal is, I will be able to adjust my... Uh, my amount of hysteresis in order to avoid false transitions to two noise. Now, uh, we will do a little example involving an inverting Schmitt trigger. Let's imagine that we have an inverting Schmitt trigger um, with an op-amp, saturation voltages of plus minus 13 volts, and uh, we've set R1 resistor to 10 kilo ohms, and uh, we're going to see what happens for two different values of R2, 33 ohms and 2.5 kilo ohms. Well, we know that the transition voltage in the first case for R2 equal 33 ohms is going to be equal to uh, 33 divided by 10k plus 33 times the saturation voltage, which in this case is 13 volts. So Vt in the first case is going to be equal to 2.48 millivolts. And for um, R2 equal to 2.5 kilo ohms, my Vt will be equal to 2.5k divided by 10k plus 2.5k times the saturation voltage 13 volts or 2.6 volts. So what will happen if, say, I have an input um, which is a triangular signal of amplitude 6 volts So it goes from 6 volts to negative 6 volts. And uh, in the first case, my transitions will happen. So this is my V out in the first case. And we know in the first case my transitions are going to happen uh, whenever my input signal crosses plus or minus 2.48 millivolts. So when it crosses plus 2.48 millivolts, my output is going to change from its high state to its low state at that uh, point, and then it's not going to change back to high until my input signal reaches negative 2.48 uh, millivolts. So that will be my switching point. 
And again, not going to change until the next time my input signal um, crosses that point and so forth. In the second case, I will get something similar, except my new transition points are now going to be when my input signal crosses 2.6 and negative 2.6 volts. So in the first case, it will be the 2.6 volt point, but I will transition from high to low. Also, I will have to go all the way to 2.6. Not a very good scale there, but hopefully you get the picture before it transitions and so forth. So what I will end up with is um, a shifted version with respect to the previous case. Uh, still notice that the uh, in, in this particular case, the hysteresis, the transition points, even though I can control how much hysteresis I have or how wide it is, uh, it's going to be symmetrical with respect to the, the zero volts. So plus minus a symmetrical value. Thank you.